In this video, we're going to focus on solving problems associated with triangles. So let's start with the one in front of us. What is the value of x in the figure below? So we have the measure of angle A and B, but we need to calculate the measure of angle C, which is represented by x. Now what you need to know is that the three measures of a triangle, the three angles, have to add up to 180. Angle A is 60 degrees, angle B is 70 degrees, angle C is equivalent to X. And so if we combine like terms, 60 plus 70, that's 130. Now in order to calculate the value of X, we need to subtract both sides by 130. And so these will cancel, and X is 180 minus 130, which means it's equal to 50 degrees. And so that's the answer for number one. Number two, what is the measure of angle B in the figure below? So go ahead and try this problem. Now we know that all three angles of a triangle has to add up to 180. Angle A is 4x minus 2. Angle B is equal to 10x. And angle C is 8x plus 6. So these three have to add up to 180. So let's begin by combining like terms. 4x plus 10x is 14x. And if we add 8x to that, that's going to be 22x. And then we can also combine negative 2 and positive 6. So that's plus 4. So let's subtract both sides by 4. 180 minus 4 is 176. Next, we need to divide both sides by 22. 176 divided by 22 is 8. So now we have the value of x, which means we can now calculate the measure of angle B. So angle B is equal to 10x. So this is going to be 10 times 8. We've got to plug this in, which is 80. So the measure of angle B is 80 degrees. This is the answer. Now what about this problem? How can we determine the measure of angle A in this picture? So what we have is an isosceles triangle. Notice that these two sides are congruent. So therefore, the opposite angles to those sides must be congruent as well. So our goal is to calculate the measure of angle A. So let's call this angle X. Now this angle is equal to angle A, so that's X as well. So we know that angle A plus B plus angle C has to add up to 180 for a triangle. So X is A, and angle B is 50, and angle C is X. So X plus X is 2X, so 2X plus 50 is equal to 180. Now let's subtract both sides by 50. So 180 minus 50 is 130. And now we just got to divide both sides by 2. And so 130 divided by 2 is 65. So therefore, the measure of angle A is 65 degrees. And as you can see, this problem wasn't too bad. It was very straightforward. Number 4. What is the measure of angle 5 in the figure below? So go ahead and calculate the measure of this angle. If you want to, pause the video. Feel free to try it. So notice that these two, they form a linear pair. So that means that they add up to 180. So angle 2 is 180 minus 120, which means that this angle is 60 degrees. Now notice that these two angles also form a linear pair. So angle 3 is 180 minus 100, which is 80. So now we can calculate angle 4, because these three angles are the interior angles of a triangle, so they have to add up to 180. So we could say that angle 4 is 180 minus the other two interior angles, so minus 80 minus 60. 180 minus 80 is 100, and 100 minus 60, that's 40. 
So that's the value of angle 4. It's 40 degrees. So now we can calculate the measure of angle 5 because these two form a linear pair. They add up to 180. So angle 5 is going to be 180 minus 40. So it's equal to 140 degrees. And so that's the answer. The measures of the three interior angles of a triangle are in a ratio 2, 3, 4. What is the measure of the largest interior angle of this triangle? So what do you think we need to do in this problem? Well, first, let's start with a picture. So let's call this angle A, B, and C. Now, the best way to approach this is to say that A is 2x, B is 3x, and C is 4x. So the three angles are now in a ratio 2, 3, 4. So now we could solve it. So we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to sum up to 180. So 2x plus 3x plus 4x is equal to 180. Now 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. So all we need to do is divide both sides by 9. And 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 180 divided by 9 is 20. So now we have the value of x. Now our goal is to calculate the measure of the largest interior angle. And clearly c is larger than a and b. 4x is greater than 2x and 3x separately. So angle c is 4x, so that's going to be 4 times 20. And so this is going to be 80 degrees. This is the answer right here. A is 2x, 2 times 20 is 40. B is 3x, 3 times 20 is 60. And C is 80. So 40 plus 60 plus 80 adds up to 180. And this is the largest of the three angles. Number 6. What is the value of x in the figure below? Now, to find the answer, you can use the exterior angle theorem. So the exterior angle of a triangle, which in this case is x, is the sum of the remote interior angles, which are these two. Now there's three interior angles, but these two are considered to be the remote interior angles. So basically, x is simply the sum of 40 and 55. So x is 95. Now another way in which we can get that answer is by calculating the value of y. So these three angles have to add up to 180. So we could say that y is 180 minus 40 minus 55. So 180 minus 40 is 140. And 140 minus 50 is 90. 90 minus 5, this is going to be 85. So now notice that these two angles form a linear pair. So y plus x is 180. So x is 180 minus y which is 180 minus 85. So 180 minus 80 is 100, and 100 minus 5 is 95. And so you have two ways in which you can get the same answer. Number 7. Calculate the value of x and y in the figures shown below. So how can we do so? Well, let's start with the figure on the left. So m is the midpoint of segment AB. As you can see, AM and MB are congruent. And also, BN and NC are congruent. So N is the midpoint of BC. When you have basically a midline that touches the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, and if it's parallel to this side, then you could use this formula. The length of the mid-segment, which is MN, that's equal to 1 half of this segment, AC. So in this case, X, which is basically the length of segment MN, that's going to be 1 half of AC, which is 30. So X in this example is 15. Now what about Y? Intuitively, you know that Y has to be 40. You can still apply the mid-segment theorem here. So HK is one half of df. Or you could say that df 
is twice the value of HK. So DF is Y, HK is 20, and 2 times 20 is 40. So this is the answer for this problem. Number 8. Determine the values of X, Y, and Z in the figure below. So what do you think we need to do here? Well, let's find X first. So notice that these three angles add up to 180. So therefore, X is going to be 180 minus 90 minus 30. So 180 minus 90 is 90, and 90 minus 30 is 60. So that's the value of x. So this is 60 degrees. So now we can calculate the value of y. Notice that x and y, they form a linear pair. So we can say that x plus y adds up to 180, which means y is 180 minus x. And in this problem, x is equal to 60 degrees. So 180 minus 60 is 120. And so this is the value of y. So now we can calculate the value of z. And also these two angles form a linear pair. So if this is 90, this has to be 90, because 90 plus 90 adds up to 180. Now the four angles of a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, must add to 360. Recall that the sum of all of the interior angles is 180 times n minus 2. So for a four-sided figure, like a quadrilateral, n is 4. And so 4 minus 2 is 2, so 180 times 2 is 360. So y plus z plus this angle, which is 90, plus this angle, that's 90 as well, has to add up to 360. So our goal is to calculate z. Now y is 120. And 90 plus 90 is 180. And 120 plus 180 is 300. So z is going to be 360 minus 300. So z is equal to 60 degrees. So in this example, x and z both have the same measure. They're both equal to 60 degrees. Now we could get that same answer using another technique. So let me draw the original picture. So these two were right angles. This is 30, this is 60, and this is 60. So let's call this A, B, C, and then D and E. So notice that ED is parallel to A, I mean not parallel, but perpendicular to AB. And also CB is perpendicular to AB. So if you have two lines that are both perpendicular to a third line, then these two lines, ED and CB, are parallel to each other. Now granted, that may not always be true, but in this case, ED and CB, they both lie in the same plane. Because sometimes you could have, let's say, AB is in the X direction, ED could be in the Y direction, CB could be in the Z direction. In that case, ED and CB are not parallel to each other. But because ED and CB lie on the same plane, and they're both perpendicular to AB, then ED has to be parallel to CB. If they lie on different planes, then that's a whole different story. So if we can see that EB, I mean ED and CB are parallel to each other, then that means that these two angles are congruent. Notice that they're corresponding angles. And so if you saw that in the beginning, you can easily determine that a Z has to be the same as X. They both have to equal 60 degrees. Number nine. Angle BAC is 50 degrees, and angle ACB 
is 60 degrees. AD and CE are altitudes. Determine the measure of angle AFC. So our goal is to calculate the value of this angle. Now this problem is a little bit harder than the other ones. So feel free to pause the video and tackle this problem. Go ahead and try it. So I'm going to focus on the large triangle first. That is triangle ABC. Now we're told that angle BAC, that's equal to 50 degrees. And angle ACB is equal to 60 degrees. So the midsection angle B has to be 180 minus 60 minus 50. 180 minus 60 is 120. And 120 minus 50 is 70. So angle B is 70 degrees, which I'm going to put here. Now we're told that AD and CE are altitudes. That means that they form right angles with the opposite sides. So this is a right angle. And this is a right angle as well. So now I'm going to focus on triangle ABD. So I'm going to redraw it this way. So here's A, this is B, and this is D. Now this is a right angle, and this is 70 degrees. So the missing side must be 180 minus 90 minus 70. 180 minus 90 is 90, and 90 minus 70 will give us 20. So this angle is 20 degrees. Now let's focus on this triangle. So that's triangle B, E, C. So this is a right angle. And this is 70. So this has to be 20 as well. Now notice that angle A is 50. And if this part is 20, this part has to be 30. Angle C is 60. And this part is 20. So 60 minus 20 is 40. So now we can focus on these three angles of triangle AFC. So those three angles have to add up to 180. So angle F, or rather AFC, that's going to be 180 minus 30 minus 40. So 180 minus 30 is 150. 150 minus 40 is 110. So therefore, angle AFC is equal to 110 degrees. And so that's it for this problem. So this is going to be the last problem of this video. What is the measure of angle A in the figure below? And we're given angle A, B, and angle B, C, D. Now, angle B, C, D, which we can call it Y for now, it's the sum of the remote interior angles, that is angle A and B. So Y has to equal angle A plus angle B. So Y, which is BCD, that's 12X minus 4. And angle A is 4X plus 2. Angle B is X squared plus 1. So let's take everything on the left side and move it to the right side. So on the right side, I have x squared plus 4x. Now, the 12x was positive on the left, but it's going to be negative on the right side. And then I have plus 2 plus 1. The negative 4, it's negative on the left, but it's going to be positive on the right. So everything changes sign if you move it from left to right. So now I can combine like terms. 4x minus 12x is negative 8x. And then 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 4, that's 7. So I have x squared minus 8x plus 7. So now, I need to factor this expression. So to factor it, we need two numbers that multiply to 7, but add to negative 8. So the only numbers that multiply to 7 are 1 and 7. 
but these two add up to positive 8. So we need to make it negative 1 and negative 7. So to factor the expression, it's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 7. So let's set each factor equal to 0. So in the first one, we need to add 1 to both sides. If we do, x is equal to 1. And for the second one, if we add 7 to both sides, x is equal to 7. Now the measure of angle A is 4x plus 2. And let's see which answer makes sense. Well, technically, both can work. But if we plug in 1, angle A is going to be 4 times 1 plus 2, which is 6. So that's one possible answer. The other possible answer, it could be 4 times 7 plus 2, which is 30. Now, 30 seems like a more reasonable answer, but it can be 6 as well. So if we calculate the other values, let's say angle B, that's x squared plus 1. And we said that x could be 1 or 7. So if it's 1, it's going to be 1 squared plus 1. And so that's going to be 2. Now if we choose 7, it's going to be 7 squared plus 1. That's 49 plus 1, which is 50. Now, if this is 30 and this is 50, that means that that's 80. 180 minus 80, this is 100, which means this has to be 80 because they form a linear pair. So these numbers, they seem more reasonable. But A and B could be 6 and 2. In that case, C would be 180 minus 6 minus 2. So C would be... 172. And then BCD, when I mean C, I meant uh, ACB, by the way. BCD would be 180 minus 172. It could be 8. So those answers are possible. But based on the way the figure is drawn, it doesn't look like it's drawn to scale. So for this problem, the measure of angle A can be 30 or 6 degrees because mathematically they both can work.